What's up guys? Welcome back to Title Gardens. This video is all about the facilities here. We've made some major updates. If this is your first time here, Title Gardens is a coral farm located in Copley, Ohio. And this is going to be a little bit of a weird video because we're not going to talk a lot about the actual aquarium systems. It's more about the facility itself. We started building this building close to three years ago and it's been a marathon process getting to this point. If I had to guess, we probably have another good 18 months to two years before it's going to be really settled in. But intro aside, let's get into some of the details. Perhaps a good place to start is with our water delivery system. What we have downstairs is a water delivery system for both RO water and for salt water. Each of these containers that you see is a thousand gallons. Unlike hobby grade equipment, what we've decided to do was to have on-demand pressurized water available at every system. And what complicates that for us is that we have systems spread out over two different buildings. There's five systems out in the greenhouse, and there's going to be a total of four systems located in this newer building. So we ran probably a mile of Schedule 80 plumbing between the two buildings and throughout the walls and ceilings and whatnot. The way that it works is that we have these two variable speed drive pumps, one for fresh water, one for salt water. When the system detects a pressure loss in that line, these variable speed drive pumps will kick on and to repressurize that line, and it does so dynamically. So right now, each of these lines is sitting at about 50 PSI, and as soon as you start opening up valves to fill up a sump, that pressure will drop, pump kicks on, blah, 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 right? The problem that we were running into was that sensor that detects that pressure loss. The one that came with the pump essentially is checking like this on-off threshold for pressure. In short, it was a little bit too sensitive even though we would have all the lines closed, this sensor will still detect some loss of pressure. So the pump would just keep running and running and running, sometimes like 10 minutes, 15 minutes even, and clearly that's not ideal. And it's because it's working off this very binary control, very on-off situation. What we decided to do is make it a little bit smarter. There is a different probe that we can use that is a transducer, and this transducer is able to detect variations in pressure in the line. So you can tell the control system to work within a range. So let's say we want it between 40 to 60 PSI. And as long as it's in there, it'll turn off the pump rather than having to hit specific numbers for the on-off control. Hopefully I explained that correctly. I said, let's go ahead, let's get these transducers installed. So it's kind of asking the plumber, hey, how much are these things? And he's like, oh, they're probably like 100 bucks. I'm like, okay, that's not too bad. A few, because there's three different variable speed drive pumps that we're using. So yeah, th that's fine. It's probably fine. I get the actual bill. It's not 100 bucks. It's closer to like 250 a pop. So whatever, say la vie. All right. This is going to be a recurring theme. I have this unrealistic thought that you can make a coral farm quiet. In my studio space here, it's very quiet. We'll get to the studio space a little bit later. But the actual coral farming area, the, the noise level has always bothered me in the greenhouse for years. So coming over to this new building, I wanted to make every effort imaginable to make the space quieter. I would say to a large degree I've failed at that, but that does not prevent me from trying what I've done downstairs is slowly started to put in sound panels on the ceiling. We went with this six inch thick sound panel made by GIK Acoustics, they're a UK brand, I think. I wanted to see what it was like, just starting out to put in 12 of these things in and around the aquarium systems downstairs. I gotta say, it's made a big difference. The problem that we were having is that since everything is such a, a boxy space, you get a lot of reverb. The way that that manifests, this is not just like my neurosis, all right? There are some practical reasons why it's good to have sound dampening. This reverb that kind of just goes throughout the downstairs, it makes any sound sound like it's coming from everywhere. Case in point, there was a pump 
that started to make a really funny sound. It started to make this like high-pitched whine. And usually that's because uh, the impeller swells or something like that. It's basically about to melt down. In the past, we were never able to isolate where exactly this thing was coming from. In a home aquarium, you have maybe like two, three pumps. Not a big deal. You'll find it. Here, there's, I don't know, 50 some odd pumps. Who knows? There's a, there's a lot of pumps here that could be the culprit. We had the darndest time figuring out even that, that it was a pump at all. It was just this high-pitched whine. After we installed these sound panels, I was upstairs in the kitchen break area, and I heard that, that whine again. So I went back downstairs, and sure enough, I was able to locate that pump. I attribute that almost solely to the fact that it was cutting out all this reverb. Is it quiet downstairs? I don't think so, but it's a lot closer. Just cutting out that reverb goes a really long way. So following up on that, I decided that 12 panels was a good start, and I've ordered 16 more for that space. Hopefully by the time that you guys are watching this video, I will have another set of sound panels up on the ceiling, further cutting out all that resonance and sound in that space. And usually it's not quite so big of a deal if it's if you're just working in like a warehouse environment. But we do quite a bit of filming downstairs and it low-key drives me nuts to have to keep on stripping the audio more and more and more to try to get rid of that, that background noise. The thing that makes the most noise downstairs easily is the protein skimmers. We are using Reef Octopus 8000s, I believe. Super Reef Octopus 8000, something like that. They run off of a single Bubble Blaster 10,000 pump. I have zero issues with the performance of these skimmers. In fact, price for performance, they are probably like the steel of the generation. They are so good, so, so good at actually skimming the water. In that sense, I am not knocking those skimmers. They are frankly outstanding. Build quality is good. They have all the bells and whistles I'm looking for. It is just solely the noise associated with that pump. I was considering a couple of things. I was really hoping that there was a DC pump alternative for that Bubble Blaster 10,000. And unfortunately, Reef Octopus doesn't have anything that goes quite that big. And a Biz doesn't make skimmer pumps. And the other option would be to replace the skimmer altogether with some kind of like Red Dragon powered Bubble King from Germany. So I looked into the Bubble Kings. Here's the thing, I have a, I have a couple of hangups about Bubble King because about 10 years ago, I purchased two of them. And a, a granted, a lot changes in 10 years. But eventually those skimmer pumps died on the two Bubble Kings that I had purchased. And it was next to impossible to A, get them repaired, B, get them replaced even because all of this stuff is imported from Germany. Didn't have the best experience in the world. Nice skimmers otherwise though, I guess. Circular logic, I'm coming back around to Bubble King because I'm a psycho about sound. I know that they're quieter. I don't know how much quieter they are now with because they have their own DC pumps and stuff like that. Now the skimmer that I was looking at to be able to skim a 2,500 gallon system, it's pretty big. It's pretty expensive. In fact, it's several times more expensive than the Reef Octopus. So already I'm like, how insane am I really about the sound? But then the thing that really became the deal killer is that this is kind of like a one-off order from Germany. So the shipping involved and customs involved in getting these skimmers over from Germany, the quote that I got was four figures. That's the deal killer. It's like, okay. Maybe the, the triple price thing should have been the deal killer, but definitely the four-figure shipping cost is the deal killer. So I've kind of like shelved that idea. What we did to quiet down our existing Reef Octopus is to make kind of like this sandwich of sound dampening. We started with vibration dampeners for the skimmer itself. We made a Type 1 PVC sandwich, and in that sandwich are layers of foam, as well as Dynamat, which is a mass-loaded vinyl product specifically made to dissipate vibration. It essentially turns vibration into heat. It really helped. You can feel the skimmer 
and you can feel every step of the vibration dampening along the way before you get to the stand. And sure enough, by the time that you're touching the stand that the whole thing is resting on, there's basically no vibration. The whole thing got a lot quieter. And the reason why I wanted to remove that vibration is that the skimmer vibrating into the whole sump makes the whole sump this weird echo resonance chamber. So by putting in the effort to eliminate as much of the vibration as I could before it even touches the sump, it made a huge difference. Whenever I show the downstairs of this building, I almost exclusively am showing the back half that has the aquariums. The front half is very much a construction area. We're gonna be getting a lot more development going on for the front part of the building, but for now, no joke, it is a construction zone. And we have tools all over the place. And these tools aren't just gonna vanish one day. I decided to bite the bullet and buy a really nice garage organizer. And the idea is that all of our tools are gonna find its way into there. Currently, we just have all these tools just sitting on a table, piled on top of each other. It's a disaster zone. The number of times where we can't find a tape measure here is comically stupid. It's like the Where's Waldo game here at Tidal Gardens. It's like where in the void did all these tape measures go? You can never find a tape measure when you need it. This particular garage organizer is made by New Age Products. You can order this one online at Lowe's, and I don't think that too many of the Lowe's locally actually has this in stock because it's their Pro Series. It's made of like a thicker gauge steel. I think that it is 18 gauge, so it's really, really nice and beefy and hefty. Really happy with the purchase so far. Organization goes a really long way, and I cannot wait until the clutter downstairs is alleviated. All right, let's go upstairs. We've made some improvements to our studio. I've been wanting to do a lot of studio related projects, but for months, there was so much that needed to be done downstairs with the actual aquariums that pretty much all of the studio related stuff got put on the back burner. But I was able to sneak in a couple things here and there. The first one is, can you guess, more sound panels. These sound panels are from Real Traps. It's a higher end brand, I would say, better fit and finish than the GIK acoustics ones that we have downstairs at the coral farming area. I splurge a little bit for the studio space. In the construction phase of this building, this particular room that we're in now was so insanely like boxy and loud from all the reflection you essentially couldn't have a conversation in this place, let alone actually recording audio or anything. It was a miserable place to do anything. We went hard on the sound isolation and it's, it's now pretty wonderful. I'm not gonna lie, I really like it. One of my dry goods suppliers was over here and we were going over some invoices sitting in this office area. And he was just like looking around for a sec and he's like, it is so quiet here. That is so weird to have a room this quiet in a coral farm. It is just unheard of. I'm like, yeah, it's, it's kind of nice. The other thing, I shoot my YouTube shows here at this desk. And behind me, I would set up a big green screen. And I was thinking, you know what would be more convenient is if it was just like a pull down so I didn't have to take apart the stand and like drape the thing and, and steam the, the green, my big green screen. So I'll just get like a pull down green screen so I can just in a pinch do that. It sort of works, it sort of works. The problem that I'm running into is in order to do green screens well, you have to be far away from the green screen because if you're too close, when you light the green screen, you, you cast a shadow on there and you don't want inconsistent greens. You want a very evenly lit green screen. So by having to uh, separate myself from the green screen more, the size of my framing has to be so exact because even though the green screen, I think it's like 60 something inches wide, it's not quite wide enough. I need a giant green screen behind me. And unfortunately the pull down ones are never gonna be that, that big. 
So in that sense, it's more convenient on the pull-down setup portion, but it is less convenient on the camera side of things, on, on how closely I have to frame everything up. But because of the small size also, it is just for me. If I have somebody sitting next to me, I have to break up the really big screen. The other problem with this green screen, it's not the right color green. There is this gold standard chroma key green that's out there. This green screen is more of like this pea soup Kermit the Frog green. And for the purposes of chroma keying, it's really not the best. It baffles me because the product is supposed to be a green screen. It's like you have one job. It's supposed to be one color green. It is chroma key green. And they just like found some other trash green to use. Not the super happiest about the color. But does it work? Yes, it does. I've done several YouTube shows with it. You probably can't tell. In one of our past building updates, I went into this whole odyssey of the doors to this building, that they weren't insulated and they certainly weren't double pane glass. And so now the steel doors are all rusting. Well, I am in the process of taking care of that. I had a commercial door company come in and they said they actually are insulated. It's single pane, right? So clearly that they're, they're not good. But they're also not good because they're steel. Because even though they're insulated, steel is such a good thermal conductor that if it's cold outside, it's cold inside, period, end of story. It does not matter that the door is full of foam. Makes sense. I'm waiting then on some quotes from them for fiberglass doors, and we will be able to repurpose these onto our, lack of a better word, party barn. Uh, right now, it is very much a outdoor building, so we're not gonna really have that temperature gradient issue. These janky steel doors are more than nice enough for that place. So that's nice in that I'm not wasting those doors. In really big news, we got ourselves a generator. I really wanted to go with Tesla batteries, but the way that our electric is set up here, it is in this perfect gray area where Tesla batteries will not work well. We have 400 amp three phase, but the voltage is 110, 206 or something like that. Tesla batteries either are single phase, 110, 220, 206, whatever, or they are three phase, 240, 480, something like that, right? So I'm like in this area right in between their product offering. Tesla batteries, not gonna be a thing. I might get them for my house later, but for this building, it's not a thing. Also, it's more important that we're able to be up and running, like potentially indefinitely. What if like there is a week long power outage? like in Texas, for example, right? I, I need to be able to have continuous operation. We ended up getting an 80 kilowatt natural gas unit from Briggs & Stratton, and I think that it's basically a V8 Chevy. <laughs> One of the reasons why I went with such a high capacity unit, whenever you're installing a generator, you have to go through this song and dance of which breakers on which panels would you like to back up? And I'm like, this sucks. This sucks. Because in the future, I don't know which breakers are going to be important. Things change. I want the entire panel to be backed up. Literally, everything is important. So this 80 kilowatt unit is enough power to run both the greenhouse and this building. Every breaker up to the entire capacity of that transformer. So essentially 400 amp three phase. What was crazy is like the, the electricians when they were installing it was saying, this is seriously the biggest generator that we've ever even ordered for anybody. The transfer switch alone, which is the thing that senses that, oh, you've lost power, kick it onto generator power. That unit itself is bigger and heavier than most people's entire residential generators. It's pretty bonkers. There is something to be said about peace of mind, right? Knowing that in a pinch, you are covered. 
I wish that I had gotten this sooner. So you might be wondering, why now? Because we're close to three years in the process. Why hasn't this been a bigger priority? One thing is we were in the construction phase for a good two years of that. But the other thing is I've actually placed this order months and months and months ago. Because of COVID, production on these systems, the lead times are months out. I actually got lucky. There are other people that have ordered really big generators from this electrician. They are still eight months out because the production lines have completely stopped at Briggs & Stratton for these things. I got lucky that they had one sitting in inventory because who the hell buys these things, right? They, so they happen to have one in stock. I'm like, that's mine. Bring it over. And they couldn't because we were in the dead of winter and they needed to pour a concrete slab just for this guy. And we had to wait, I think, a month, maybe two months, just for the weather to cooperate enough that we're able to pour the slab and then get the delivery of this generator. But it's here now. And I think that they have to do a, a last minute testing to make sure everything is, is, is up to speed and everything is working out right. But it is essentially hooked up. One last little bit about electrical here. A while back, we decided to change how the greenhouse was getting powered. Originally, there was a power line coming all the way from my house to the greenhouse. And it was essentially a Mickey Mouse connection because when we first started the greenhouse, there was maybe nine devices plugged in. The idea was the greenhouses can provide all the light, so you don't need any lighting. Fast forward to today, there's probably a hundred lights in that building. There's all kinds of technology on those systems, controllers, pumps, dosers. There's probably going to be ozone systems in the future. Who knows what the heck else? We got to a point where we couldn't plug another device in without blowing breakers left and right. When we built this new building, they gave us the option, well, we can run a 100 amp service from one of the 200 amp panels to the greenhouse. And that will give you quite a lot more bandwidth because it'll also be three phase. I'm like, great, let's do that. When we did that, we checked the load and we were pulling all 100 amps from this panel. This is a 200 amp panel and we're stripping off 100 amp right off the bat in order to do this greenhouse. And I'm like, at this point, we don't have anything going on in this new building yet. Like once we start putting stuff into this new building, air conditioners, aquarium systems, lighting and all that, we're going to want to get some of that 100 amp back. Like this might have been a mistake. What we were able to do was pull another leg from the transformer during this whole generator project to then free up that 100 amp that we had kind of stolen from the front half of this building. So now this building has the full 400 amp three phase and the greenhouse has its own 100 amp three phase that is all covered by this new generator. All right guys, that pretty much does it for our little facilities update. I'll do another video where I talk about some future steps, but this should get you guys caught up to where we are currently. That pretty much does it from here. Until next time, happy reefing.